Most medical students, physicians, and healthcare professionals feel they just don't have enough time in the day to complete all of the tasks in their lives. Tasks such as studying, emails, administrative duties, personal life, or just maintaining their overall health. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. As a medical student, I personally struggled with studying, time management, and completing research projects. I was honestly just that average student trying to get by. I thought to myself, Maybe success is determined by the gifts or talents someone is born with. However, I started reading and incorporating productivity techniques during my emergency medicine residency training. I then began to realize that the most likely way to succeed is actually by just being consistent and having a great productivity system. Over the past decade, while mentoring many medical students and physicians, I developed 12 simple steps for anyone looking to successfully create a productivity system. I guarantee that if you just follow these 12 steps, your productivity will exponentially increase while decreasing stress in your life. If you want full descriptions on exactly how to perform each step, please visit physicianzen.com where you can download the free detailed ebook. As a general overview, these 12 steps will allow you to declutter and manage three important environments, the physical, digital, and mental workspaces. Step one, gather the essential supplies to make you productive. Less is actually better. Try to have only one of each item that you actually use on your physical workspace. If you need some recommendations, I created a detailed list of exactly what I use on physicianzen.com. Step two, declutter your physical workspace. Any clutter such as books, mail, documents, or extra stationary items will distract you from being productive. Step three, create an optimal physical workspace. After you declutter, focus on creating an ideal workspace. The optimal workspace will have no distractions so you can complete your most important tasks. It also should be set up to allow efficient processing of any incoming physical items. Step four, organize the physical workspace. Now that you have created an optimal physical workspace, you will learn how to organize any current items you have and any incoming physical items that will come in. Step five, declutter the digital workspace. Stop being a digital hoarder. Sort all of your digital files into things you want to keep and then trash the rest. Step six, organize the digital workspace. Create an organizational system for your digital workspace to process any incoming digital items. Step seven, manage your emails and get to inbox zero. We receive over 600 emails each week. Create a system to optimally manage and process all of these emails down to zero each day. Step eight, declutter the mind. Your mind is meant to create ideas, not store them. If your mind is not clear, it will be hard to create new ideas or to give 100% focus to a task. Learn how to declutter your mind and create a process for externalizing any new thoughts. Step nine, implement a productivity app. Go beyond checklists and learn how to use productivity apps to help complete major projects in your life. This can be done by listing out all ongoing projects and their immediate next actions. Step 10, effectively use your calendars. A calendar is a system to keep commitments that you make to yourself and others. Here are some tips to use calendars effectively. One, consolidate all of your calendars. Two, only schedule date and time specific events in your calendar. If it can be performed at any time, then place that task into your productivity app. Three, check your calendar each morning and night to get a glimpse of what your current and next day will look like. Step 11, batch your habits and tasks. By batching your habits and tasks, you can save a tremendous amount of time by grouping similar tasks and performing them only once or twice a day. For example, in the morning, you can exercise. Mid-morning, you can complete a most important task. In the afternoon, you can batch all of your shallow tasks, such as email, text, and social media. And in the evening, maybe you can find some time to complete another most important task. Step 12, perform the weekly review. The last step is the most important step. It simply involves reviewing all of your current projects and tasks once a week. It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes, but 
It will ensure your projects are up to date and you are making the most efficient use of your productivity system. Doing this properly will save you countless hours. In this video, we will go through step one, gathering the essential supplies to create an optimal physical workspace. I've gone through many stationary items over the past 15 years. In doing so, I've narrowed the items in my physical workspace down to the bare essentials. If you need, I put links to all the items I personally use in the description below. The first items you will need are the larger ones. You will need a comfortable chair, desk, and bookcase. This will serve as the framework to build your physical workspace. Select quality items that make you feel good and want to work. I recently moved towards automated desks that allow me to change from sitting to standing at will. Make sure to have a two tray system to efficiently process any incoming physical items. You will also need Pendaflex folders in order to organize all your files as well as create a boomerang filing system. I would recommend having at least 100 Pendaflex folders. If you are not familiar with what a boomerang filing system is, please watch the video with the link above. It's basically a simple way to mail physical items back to yourself at a specific date. Create a system to organize all of your physical documents with a filing cabinet, A through Z filing guides, and a label maker. These items will allow you to organize and find all of your physical documents easily and efficiently. Get a scanner. A scanner will allow you to go towards a more digital organizational system. I created a video above on how to use a scanner and would definitely recommend a professional scanner since it will make processing physical items extremely fast. However, if you want to learn how to use your phone as a free document scanner, click the link above. Get a trash can and paper shredder. Having a trash can next to your desk is important so you don't keep trash on your workspace. If something is categorized as trash, you can immediately throw it away. A paper shredder is also an essential item since sensitive and personal documents go through our desk every day. Often, these items clutter our desk because we have no way of disposing of them safely. Having a paper shredder next to your desk will allow you to process these sensitive items immediately. Next, let's set up the stationary items on your desk. Start with a good desk organizer and have only one of each of the following items. A black pen, a blue pen, a pencil, a highlighter, a pad of post-it notes, a notepad, a pair of scissors, a stapler, a stapler remover, and a letter opener. I found these are the only stationary items I truly need at my desk space. Anything more, and you could be adding distractions from being productive. Lastly, make sure you have good lighting at your workspace. Natural lighting is the best, but if you don't have access to a window, get a good desk lamp. Are you having trouble focusing or being productive because your workspace is so cluttered with textbooks, journal articles, or mail? Each unprocessed item on your physical workspace is actually a barrier towards being productive. In this video, we will go through step two, decluttering the physical workspace. The first step in decluttering is to gather everything from your physical workspace and place it on the ground. I literally mean everything, including documents, pictures, books, and stationary items. This will allow you to reorganize all parts of your workspace. I found the easiest way to declutter is by separating your things into three separate piles. The first pile is the possibly keep pile for all items you actually want to keep or are considering keeping. The second pile is the trash pile for any items that should be thrown away. The third pile is the donation pile for items that may be useful to someone else. After you have placed all items into these three piles, you will now purge things from the trash and donation piles. Make sure to go through all of your documents in the trash pile and shred anything that has personal information. For the rest of the items, throw them directly into the trash can. For the donation pile, place those items in your garage or car and plan to donate those items immediately or as soon as possible. The only thing that now remains in your physical workspace is the possibly keep pile. Don't worry, we will deal with this pile in step four. But first, we will need to create the perfect physical workspace in step three to properly organize the items in the possibly keep pile. Is your workspace an area of constant distraction, 
versus allowing you to be productive? After helping to reorganize the physical workspace of many medical students and physicians, the common theme I have seen for poor workspace hygiene are the following. One, there are unnecessary items in your workspace. Two, items are not organized in a functional way. And three, there are too many duplicates of each item. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will go over step three, creating the optimal physical workspace. If you haven't done so already, please watch the videos on step one and step two. Step one discusses the exact items you will need to create your workspace. You will also need to declutter your workspace, which is described in the step two video. The two main purposes of creating an optimal workspace are to first, allow you to be maximally productive by having only the absolutely necessary items at your workspace. And second, gives you an efficient process for dealing with any incoming physical items and therefore preventing clutter from accumulating. All right, let's start by setting up the framework for your physical workspace. Place your desk and chair in an isolated area with minimal distractions and preferably with good natural lighting. Then place the bookshelf and cabinet next to your desk. Now let's set up the stationary items on your desk. For a list of recommended stationary items that should go on your desk, click the video above. I would recommend placing these items in a desk organizer that is within arm's reach. Now place your scanner, trash can, and paper shredder right next to your desk. This will help in processing physical documents. For example, a simple setup such as having a scanner, shredder, and trash can in one area will allow you to process any incoming physical documents in seconds and prevent clutter from accumulating. Next, create a two tray system. It looks so simple, but if used correctly, it is the backbone to a productivity system. The two tray system is basically a place for you to put any incoming physical items so it does not touch your actual work area and distract you. The top tray is for items that need quick processing, such as a document needing to be organized, incoming mail, or something that needs to be scanned and shredded. The bottom tray is for items that need a little bit longer processing, such as filling out an application or reading a journal article. After you have created your two tray system, don't place it physically on your desk as it can cause distractions. A bookshelf is usually a good place to put it. Create a boomerang filing system to mail physical documents to yourself at a future date. Have you ever had that random hotel reservation or meeting notes just lying around and didn't know where to put it until the date of the event? A boomerang filing system will solve that problem. I created a separate video which you can click above and see exactly how to create and use a boomerang filing system. The boomerang file should not be kept on your desk. It can also be kept on your bookshelf with your two tray system. Lastly, place your desktop or laptop into your workspace. Now you have an extremely functional physical workspace for you to work productively, but can also process any physical items coming in and prevent accumulation of clutter. From now on, your workspace will no longer be a source of distraction, but an environment where you will work with maximum productivity. One of the most difficult parts about having a productivity system is continuously having to deal with things that come up in our physical workspace. Creating an efficient process for organizing physical items is key to maintaining a good workspace. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will go over step four, organizing the physical workspace by creating a simple, easy to use process to organize any incoming physical documents. Before we start though, please make sure to have an optimized workspace by completing the previous video on step three. Okay, now let's get to it. First, take out all the physical items you would like to organize. If you performed step two, we will be organizing the items from your possibly key pile. Now, simply sort all of your physical items as either active project or general reference items. Active project items are things that are needed for an ongoing and current project in your life. General reference items are things that you need to reference from time to time, but are not directly related to any current projects. It's important to separate these files because the active project items are what you need quick and immediate access to. If you start mixing them together with general reference items, it will take you much longer to find these items and complete your current projects. Here are the materials that you will need. 
a cabinet, A through Z filing guides, Pendaflex folders, and a label maker. Make sure to use a label maker to make things look professional. That way, you will be more inclined to continue using your organizational system. We'll first start by organizing the general reference items. Create categories for all of your general reference items. The easiest way is to use the first word that comes into your mind when you see a certain document. This will likely be the same word you will remember in the future to recall and obtain that document. Some sample categories could be finances, health, home documents, and vehicles. For those of you who have a lot of physical journal articles, you can also create a separate A through Z filing system. I think this is important, especially for trainees to organize and reference articles easily. I started doing this since I was a third year medical student and have indexed over 3,500 articles. I recommend categorizing by organ system for easy reference. For items that are considered active projects, I use the following labeling system. Year, period, month, period, day, followed by the project name. This allows me to sort active projects by due date. It makes much more sense to organize your active projects by due date instead of alphabetically so you can prioritize projects that are due first. With the advancement of technology, data storage is getting larger. Devices are getting smaller and prices are getting cheaper. This allows for accumulation of massive amounts of unsorted digital files, resulting in digital hoarding. Unlike the physical workspace where we can see things pile up, we are unable to see just how cluttered our digital workspace is. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will discuss how to declutter your digital workspace. The three areas I see that digital clutter is highest is on the desktop, download folder, and documents folder. Locate all areas in your digital workspace that contain unorganized files and let's get started. The two main folders you will need to sort all your digital files are the active project folder and general reference folder. The active project folder contains all files that are pertinent to an ongoing active project you have in your life. The general reference folder contains any files that are important enough for you to store, but will only need to reference infrequently. This can be items such as any completed projects, vehicle information, taxes, medical journals, and so on. The third folder that you will need is the pending review folder. This is similar to the top tray of your physical two tray system. Files that go here are things that need to be sorted or still have an action associated with them. Also, this is the folder where all new incoming digital files that you download should go to. As you sort through all of your digital files, you will notice you have a lot of files that you don't need. Immediately put those in the trash folder. Remember, we are not organizing your files at this point. Just sort them into these three folders. We will organize your files in the following step. After you have decluttered and sorted all of your digital files, just remember, any future digital items will now go into the pending review folder. This way, you only have to review one folder and it will prevent digital clutter from reaccumulating. Organizing the digital workspace can seem difficult and tedious, but if you don't have a functional organizational system, you will accumulate digital clutter. The reason digital clutter accumulates is because people don't have an efficient way to organize incoming digital files. Those files then end up on the computer desktop or download folder for days, months, or even years. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. If you went through the previous step, you will now have decluttered your digital files and sorted them into either the active projects folder or general reference folder. In this video, we will focus on organizing both of these folders to create a system that allows you to sort and organize any incoming digital file in seconds. You will notice that this process will be almost identical to how I organize the physical files. I like having an organizational system that translates to both the physical and digital workspaces. Organizing the general reference folder. You can do this by creating folders for each category for all of your digital general reference items. I recommend using the first word that comes into your mind when you see a certain file, since this will likely be the same word you will remember later to search for that file. If you have a lot of digital journal articles in PDF format, I recommend creating a main folder and then placing subfolders with all of the different specialties. 
Organizing active project items. This is similar to how I organize my physical workspace items. I use the following labeling system. Year, period, month, period, day, followed by the project name. This allows me to sort these active projects by due date and prioritize projects that are due first instead of just by their project name. The pending review folder is for all items that still need some type of action before being organized. At this point, I recommend performing all of the actions needed for these items and then organizing them into your active projects folder, general reference folder, or trash. Now you have created a great digital organizational system that can handle any incoming digital files. Remember to sort and organize your pending review folder each day and prevent clutter from accumulating. Are you stressed with the hundreds or even thousands of emails in your inbox? The average office worker receives over 600 emails each week, and getting that number down to zero may seem like an impossible task. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will go over exactly how you can process your email inbox to zero each day. I will present a simple system on how I've been able to achieve inbox zero over the past 10 years in 30 minutes or less each day despite receiving a ton of email. First, consolidate all of your email accounts. If you have multiple email accounts for personal use or work, consolidate it into one program such as Apple Mail or Microsoft Outlook. Being able to process all emails with one program will make you much more productive. Next, create a system to process all incoming email. I suggest using this system developed by Merlin Mann. The basic idea is that any email can be processed using one of these five actions, deleting, delegating, doing, deferring, or archiving. Let's go over each one. Any email that has little to no potential benefit should be deleted immediately. Also, if there is spam email, block or unsubscribe from those emails immediately. We definitely don't delegate many tasks in our lives that we should. Figure if someone else is better suited to answer or take action on a specific email. If so, immediately forward that email to that person and request that they take action on that email. Delegating email tasks will save you a tremendous amount of time. If you can't delete an email or delegate it, then the next step is to determine if you're able to do the action that is necessary to process that email. Doing the action may involve reading an email for content, responding to an email, clicking on relevant links on the email, and so forth. If you have the time and resources to do the action that the email requires, then do it right away and complete the action. If you encounter an email that you absolutely can't delete, delegate, or have enough time to do, then you will need to defer it to a later date and time. Deferring should absolutely be the last resort since it involves you looking at an email more than once. Personally, I use Outlook to create a follow-up date to respond to the email. Not having a process to defer emails is probably the leading cause that keeps most people from achieving inbox zero. After performing the required action on an email, you will need to archive any email you don't delete in order to have zero emails in the inbox. Merlin Mann suggests using one folder called archive and placing all undeleted emails in the archive folder after they have been processed. Any email should be easily retrieved using the search function of your email application. This is absolutely the simplest way to archive processed email. Here are some other tips to manage your emails. Process all emails only once a day. Don't be tempted to check or reply outside of that window. It may take some time to get used to, but you will soon realize the benefits of not being distracted from constantly checking and responding to emails throughout the day. Turn off notifications. Don't have FOMO. If you process your emails once a day, every day, at a similar time, you won't constantly feel the need to be checking your phone for emails. Set up expectations for others. Let others know that you will be checking emails only once a day and that if they really need to reach you, they can call you on the phone. The mind is meant for creating ideas, not storing them. Many people keep their minds filled with unprocessed thoughts, projects, and ideas. With all of the distractions in their mind, how can they expect to truly focus on a single task? 
Clearing the mind will allow you to have the following benefits. It gives you a clear view of what is actually going on in your life. It helps prioritize the projects that actually mean the most to you. It prevents you from overcommitting to non-essential projects. And it allows you to be fully present and focused on whatever you are doing in your life. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will go over steps eight and nine, how to declutter your mind and organize your projects into a productivity app. Let's start by doing a mind dump. All you need to get started is a simple notepad and a pen. Simply list every project that may be occupying your mind. A project is anything that requires two or more steps to complete. Don't prioritize the importance of the project. The goal is to simply clear out everything out of your mind. Don't be surprised if you have more than 30 projects going on in your mind. After you have written down all of your projects, simply define an immediate next action required to complete each project. The next action is usually a simple step such as sending an email or doing a web search. The secret to productivity is thinking of projects as next actions instead of end products. Take for example, climbing a mountain. If the only thing you can think of is how high and difficult it would be to reach the top, you may never actually start. Instead, just think of projects by their very next actions. With enough next actions or steps, any project will eventually be completed. After you have externalized all of your projects and defined the next actions on paper, I recommend placing all ideas into a productivity app such as Todoist. I created a detailed way of organizing and using productivity apps on physiciansend.com and the link is listed in the description. If you completed the instructions in this video, you will not only have a clear mind, but also have a sense of direction for all projects in your life. Moving forward, never allow your mind to be used as a reminder system and make sure any incoming ideas are externalized immediately. If you get into this habit of externalizing all of your thoughts, you will allow your mind to perform deep focus as well as have infinite space for creating new ideas. Using a calendar effectively is crucial in our personal and professional lives. People who don't use their calendars properly can sometimes be labeled as undependable, unpredictable, and lazy. However, if you truly use your calendar correctly by showing up when and where you say you will, it will increase your credibility and open countless doors. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will go over step 10, how to use a calendar effectively. First, consolidate all your calendars into a calendar app. The easiest way is to use a native calendar app such as Apple Calendar or Microsoft Outlook. I personally use an app called Fantastical for Mac. Second, input events immediately and be specific. Schedule any event in your calendar immediately when it comes up. Don't wait for later or eventually you will forget to add something important to your calendar. When inputting your event, make sure to be specific about the following. The title of the event, start and end time, the specific location, and a short note about what the event will be about. Third, set a reminder at least 15 minutes before an event time to ensure you don't miss any important meetings. Fourth, schedule and invite others. Being proactive is the key to being productive. Don't rely on others to put events into their own calendars. Invite them using your calendar app so it appears on their calendar as well. Fifth, Always follow through and show up early. Early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. Make it a habit to show up at least five minutes early to any meeting. This is a sign that you respect others' time and value the encounter you are about to have. Lastly, despite your best efforts, there will be times when you will be late for a meeting. Here are some things you can do in that situation. One, contact the person as soon as you know you're going to be late. Two. Apologize for the inconvenience. Three, tell them why you are running late. Four, give them an accurate time when you will be arriving. When I first started implementing a productivity system as a medical student, I just focused on organizing my physical and digital workspaces as well as integrating a task management system. I was simply trying to get as much done with the amount of time I had. However, later on, I found that by batching habits and tasks, that requires similar amount of mental and physical energy, I was able to perform tasks more efficiently and with less time. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. 
In this video, we will go over step 11, how to batch your habits and tasks to increase your productivity. In order to understand the concept of habit and task batching, you must first realize that certain tasks require more productive energy than others. Shallow tasks are tasks that require low amounts of productive energy and are extremely easy to perform, compared to most important tasks that require you to be at your peak level of your productive energy and usually require a significant amount of time to perform. If you can batch your shallow tasks, this would create time in the day to complete your most important task. So how do you batch your shallow tasks? Well, first define essential versus non-essential shallow tasks. Essential shallow tasks are tasks that require low amounts of productive energy that need to be done on a daily basis. Things such as processing email, sorting your office, sorting your computer, or checking your calendar. Non-essential shallow tasks are tasks that also require low amounts of productive energy, but are tasks that bring little to no significant meaning to our lives. This includes binge watching TV or YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and constant texting. These are the tasks that make us feel guilty after doing it for a significant amount of time. The key to creating time in your day is to first get rid of as many non-essential shallow tasks as possible. A study showed that people spend over two and a half hours a day on social media and non-essential tasks. This simple act of getting rid of non-essential tasks can give back over two hours a day of your life. Once you have defined all of the shallow tasks that actually need to be done in your life, organize them by the time of day that most suits those tasks. For example, batch morning tasks such as checking the calendar, reading important news articles and blogs, or checking your boomerang file. Afternoon shallow tasks may include getting the mail, sorting the office, processing email to inbox zero, sorting your computer, or checking all social media accounts. The key to how batching shallow tasks creates more time is that it lets you perform these shallow tasks only once a day instead of continuously doing them. This avoids task switching and allows you to complete your most important task in between your shallow tasks. Schedule your most important tasks. Your most important task, when completed, will bring significant benefit to your personal and professional life. Things such as studying for a test, creating a side hustle to create passive income, writing a journal article, becoming a better parent, or exercising and taking back your health. You can define your most important task and see how that would change your life significantly. These tasks take a significant amount of productive energy and time. Most people say they can't complete the most important tasks in their lives just because they're too busy. However, if you truly take out all the non-essential tasks in your life, you will see that you have more than enough time to achieve the most important task in your life. Just like other things in life, a productivity system will need routine maintenance to make sure all your projects and actions are up to date. Hi, this is Dr. V. Din from Physician Zen. In this video, we will go over step 12, how to perform the weekly review. The main purpose of the weekly review is to look at your productivity system from a global view through the perspective of your most current self. This ensures that you don't spend time on tasks that are not directly enhancing your current life. The 15 or 30 minutes you spend on your weekly review to clarify all your projects and tasks can save you hours, days, or even weeks of precious time. First, Set a time and day of the week to perform the weekly review. Pick a time and day that you consistently will have 15 to 30 minutes every week. I suggest performing it on Friday afternoons since it is at the end of most people's work week and you can go into the weekend with a stress-free mind as well as a clear view about the upcoming week. Second, organize any lingering unprocessed ideas or actions into your task management system. Third, evaluate each project from your current life's perspective. Let's face it. Life can change dramatically from day to day, and your priorities may also change from week to week. During your weekly review, examine all of your projects through the lens of your most current self. Maybe projects that meant something to you a week ago don't have the same meaning in your current life, or maybe you want to now add a new project into your life. Performing the weekly review allows you to purge unnecessary projects and add meaningful ones. Fourth, decide if each project has an appropriate next action. Sometimes the direction of a project has changed and the next action for the project has been shifted. Take this opportunity to make sure each project has the appropriate next action needed. Performing an inappropriate next action can cost you valuable time. 
Fifth, review your someday maybe list. This is probably one of the biggest benefits of the weekly review is that it allows you to review your someday maybe list of projects to see if you can now bring in a new meaningful project given your current commitments. After completing the weekly review, you will have a true sense of what your current commitments are in your life. This is a feeling very few people experience and it will allow you to have complete control over your life. You will now be comfortable saying yes or more importantly, no to any new incoming projects. Visit physiciansend.com for a free PDF of the 12 steps and subscribe below.